button. Well, we should be live, hopefully. Yeah. So. I'm just turning the volume up. Hello, hello everybody. And welcome back to the workshop. Hello. Okay, so welcome everybody. I'll just give it a couple of minutes uh, for hopefully some people to come on. Uh, but welcome to this live edition of Talking Turning and Exonites on Yen Good evening, everybody. It's actually been quite a nice day today here. So, uh, yeah, we're in the workshop, so we're going to have a, a talking, turning and tea live. Uh, and we're going to talk about some possibly AWOL stickers <laughs> that might have that, that I might have misplaced or lost. Hopefully we haven't. Uh, and also talk about some recent acquisitions uh, in the workshop. So I uh, hope you're all OK. Uh, do you want to say anything, Nicola? You want to... Hello. Hello? Where are you? No. <laughs> Hello. Hello. There's Nicola, uh, manning, manning the desks. <laughs> right, so what have we been up to? Well, apart from uh, the podcast last night, uh, today, well, this week I've been faffing in the workshop. Uh, and the reason for the faffing was we were going to keep it secret, but us. I decided last night on the podcast to mention the uh, upcoming assessment by the uh, RPT, the Register of Professional Turners. So, uh, yes, the RPT assessment and accreditation. Uh, um, you can all go onto the RPT's website. Let me just... Are you getting me? Yeah, you're waving. Yeah. I know I'm waving. I'm here waving me out. Nicola's just informed me that I'm waving. You know, even the blind know when they're waving. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, you can, if you're ever interested in going for your RPT accreditation, you can go on the website and it'll tell you what's involved. Uh, but they did say to me, that's enough for looking at me, I suppose. They did say to me, piece of elm ready for tomorrow. We'll talk more about that in a moment they said that the assessment is not meant to be intimidating but it is rigorous which you'd expect and also they they really let you know they enclose some documents don't they nicola mm -hmm. as to what you really need to be getting to make sure your workshop is compliant with the regulations and things like that so uh what we ordered was two of these so i've got one here hope you get in that that's okay so there you go i hope you can see in there I'll just get my bearings with the camera and the the cabinet there so uh there is a cabinet full of hazardous slash flammable things and there's a warning notice on there and i apologize if it's not been stuck on straight i did it i asked i asked nicola which way is the right way up for this sticker <laughs> so uh yeah i needed some help to make sure i didn't stick it on upside there yeah i did my best i tried to line it up uh there with that that shut line uh, so yeah i tried to just line it up so yeah i've got one there and if i come over here now we're going to be to and fro all over the workshop today and i have got another one in here not another one in here another one here uh yeah keep forgetting about that So, another one in there. So they're great. They weren't. Oh, they weren't dear at all. Uh, Amazon twenty nine pounds each. 
So, uh, a must, really, if you're considering doing your RPT, they, they did uh, specify on their documentation that you need Kosh compliant metal cabinets. So you've got those there, we've got two of those. And oh, we've got another sticker coming for this one. Oh yeah, sorry, we've got another sticker. Yeah, another sticker's ordered on this one and that one will say flammable. Uh, whether or not it just says flammable materials or... I can't remember what it says, but it doesn't say flammable. Okay, and then we have got, coming over here to the door, Farius Exitus sign. So I've got one there. And then I don't know, I'm just going to... Nicola, can you help me? Hopefully line it up. I'm yeah, so, I'm... It's, it's, there's a delay. Yeah, you sort of there. Yeah, right. Another one on that door. And then, if I just come around the back of Nicola. Medium. Now. Notification. I'm just doing this all at arm's length, so just sort of like just trusting. Yeah, you line can of see sight. it there. Right, okay. And so there's a another fire exit sign there. So that's... Uh, some of the recommendations they had. Uh, I've got... Now, I've had these ever since I decided to uh, have classes here. I purchased a first aid kit, and that does have uh, an eye wash uh, station in it. And then a extinguisher up there. And then also what we've been today... We've been to Axminster Tools and Machinery today in Warrington, picked up a new face shield. Mine's there, mine's been relocated. And a, this cupboard's a lot tidier now that all the, the, the flammable and combustible stuff. And then I've got a, a good respirator, similar to the sort of one you would wear in a body shop. Uh, there, because the assessor needs to be provided with PPE, personal protective equipment. So, uh, yeah, so some of the things there that we've been purchasing to make the workshop uh, regulation compliant and also uh, to make sure that, yeah, and they said, obviously, you need... Uh, dust extraction, which we've got there, got dust extraction there, and I have got my, over here, my power shield. So, it's it's got to be, you know, all the, all the I's dotted and all the T's crossed, uh, ready for your assessment, try not to forget anything. Uh, is, is there anything else to swear about the assessment, or is that pretty much... Um, yeah, they, they're going to... They want to see me turn something. They check the workshop. They check uh, to prove that I have uh, accounts, to prove that I am yeah. uh, a professional wood turner. And also they uh, interview you. And I think they want to see some examples of work as well here. They've, they've had the photographic evidence. I think they want to see actual physical evidence while they're here as well. So yeah, it's meant to be rigorous, but not intimidating. So that's pretty much uh, got you up to speed with where we're at regarding the upcoming assessment. Don't know the date yet. They're trying to get a regional assessor. And this is the first time that a blind person has gone through the accreditation. So it's new for them as well, they said. So uh, that's cool. Right, on to the sticker scenario. Right, I believe that some people have been saying, oh, I can't see my sticker. So, I've had this wall, uh, sorry, I've had this board, an old picture frame, on, let's just get my bearings, it was up there. So, possibly out of shot a lot of the time. So, there's some stickers on here. So, I'll start here at the right. Can, I think this one, I'm moving in closer. Well, let me just come around for a bit, otherwise I'm going to be away. All right. There's a very angry maker there, which is the top. 
top rectangular one. Uh, from the so you've got MSA wood creation. That's Mike Atkinson. And the reason that's taped on is when I first got it, uh, I peeled it off the backer. It fell on the floor, butter side down, <laughs> into a load of sawdust. <laughs> so the adhesive lost its integrity. So I've had to tape that on. Um, HF Bowen Designs. Harold Bowen. The Very Angry Maker. Maker Central. Zimmer Wood Turning. AWT. Uh, AS Wood Turns, that is. Bram the Wade's Mill Wood Turner. Leon Britton. That's your old sticker. All right. Um, thank God it's Friday Custom Woodwork. Uh, TQ Blanks. Do you John, want to take that now? Um, John Clothier, the Black Dog Workshop. Um, Jimson Stuff Handmade. Another MSA Wood Creation. Uh, KK Make, David Richard Julie, Mike Waltz, and um, I think that's a Uval one. Okay. Uh, wood turning with a Y in the middle. All oh, right, okay. So, have you got there your you phone go. there? Yeah. Thank you. So, got some there, yeah. and then also uh, up on here, I know that's prickly sauce. Yeah, so you've got Yeti. That's came with the thermal mug from Man Crafting. Right. Why route? Yeah, that's just the air rifle that we've got. All right. Hampshire Sheen, Low and Design, Turning Works, ah. and then Temple Boy Turning. And there's a couple just on the end there. So we've got another Jimson stuff. We've got the Walnut Log. Um, what's that one? wooddude.co.uk, uh, JP Woodwork, uh, Michael and Christine Hesseltine, and then Yorkshire Git. Right, so I haven't got then, or I've misplaced one by Ron Caddy. Uh, Ron doesn't have any. Oh, right. That was a joke. Oh, right. Oh, <laughs> oh. I don't think he's got any. All oh, right, okay. Well, I'll just, and then over on here again, uh, there's a couple more. So we've got Makers International. Why have we got three Jimson stuff? Oh, that's a nice guy. Why have I got... Yeah, got well, right, well, Jimson listen, stuff. right, listen. Right, it's cause... what You know you why. You can't see. Yeah, so it, for me, it's just another round sticker. Yeah. So I've slapped it up. For me, I mean, that could have been anybody. Yeah. But I've got three, cool. three stickers by Jim Overton. <laughs> Big shout out to Jim Overton. Uh, and that's what's... one of yours. That's the old one with the photograph of you on it that we did. Okay, and I've got one here. Uh, yeah, that's wood turning at fifty four A Keith. Oh, Barrow. so Keith Barrow, and that's stuck there. So yeah, I mean, just to try and get stickers in various locations so the camera can pick them up at various angles and things like that. That was the logic behind, uh, because. Uh, I'm sort of like mm, a bit stuck for really, you know, I'd love a huge wall with loads and thousands of stickers on, but the layout of the workshop and how it works for me and how it all flows, it's not really evolved that way. But I think it's cool that I'm sticking them on other things and yeah, it's like a bit of a treasure hunt anyway. So let me just tell you who we've got on. So um, we've got Hexo Knight. The MFA wood turning, Wayne the wood turner, Cy Smith, um, Chris Nunn, Clive Barrent, uh, and then this is a fun one, Hi Met Sue Box, I have no idea what's going on. Um, Cy Smith, what I meant about the tape is any workshop I've been in, college and uni, have areas marked off where only one person can work in while using a machine. Oh, right. I don't know if they'll be that anal for uh, that I, personal workspace. All right. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't know, Sai. That I've not heard that, but yeah, this is what I thought you meant. I have a cable going across there, so it's duct taped down. Uh, just stop me tripping over it. But, but as long as uh, the the assessor, you know, stands. I suppose it's probably best if he stands here and I'm turning there. That's if he wants to see me turn a ball. He might say, oh, well, let's see you turn a pen. Who knows? Uh, yeah, so hmm, I think, yeah, you're up to speed. You probably know as much as we do now about the assessment. Uh, just carry on with you. Sorry. Oh, yeah, good evening, everybody. Anyway, yeah, carry on. Um, Grant Marshall, uh, Wendell Wood Turner says, I'll have 
have to send you mine, thanks for yours. Um, AH Bespoke. Um, would turning live with Steve Twidell. I was having a nice snooze and your notification woke me. Bloody cheek. Sorry, <laughs> not really. Uh, Larry Contreras. Hi guys, great to see you on. Thank you Hi. very much. Thanks everybody. Hello. Mm, cool. Yeah, so, yeah, thanks for joining us again. Uh, so, yeah, what we've been doing, for those that have just joined, we're having a bit of an update, and I've been talking about my latest, sorry, our latest acquisitions. Uh, even though Nicola hasn't, as of yet, turned anything, this is as much Nicola space as it is mine. And Nicola space is over there, a little bench over there, kept nice and tidy for when she's uh, got the, uh, the craft bug. You can see the pink. Um, three drawer units underneath. Uh, yeah, but it says Nicola, of course, everything in here belongs to Nicola as well. So if you want to come in here and throw something on the lathe or make a pen <laughs> or use the table saw, have fun. You, you know, you know, you know, uh, Wayne Bigfoot Woods Craft has come on as well. All right. Hi, Wayne. Right. Uh, let me carry on now with a couple of things that I want to discuss. Uh, you keep calling out any chat, Nicola, that's cool, uh, and new arrivals. Uh, piece of elm here, uh, knock the corners off today. Uh, Matthew is here tomorrow, uh, so we'll be filming a video uh, for YouTube. Uh, so it's going to be directed and uh, edited by a, a undergraduate of film and media. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be... The project for tomorrow don't know exactly what yet but we'll try and make it something uh interesting for the first one with matthew but we really we need to talk about as well we need to factor in time tomorrow about letting them know how to get the axminster logo and yeah. and some you know something you you need to have a chat with him about some certain things yeah. so there's that and also i found these today uh, sorry, yesterday, while I was having a faff and moving things around, a couple of fails. So, remember, now, I know there's a lot of wood turners out there that have uh, maybe done this sort of shenanigans in the early days. Believe you me, I did this a lot more than any of you guys <laughs> in the early days. Hence, the depth gauge that I use off Brendan Bacon Soda. Uh, Nicholas said it's spalted, so it's spalted beach... Uh, it's a spalty beach funnel. When the wood turner says he's got the t-shirt. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, I found and I'd kept it to remind me, as you know. Uh, you textured it on the bottom as well. You can see the bit. Well, obviously I'd done the bottom first yeah. and then gone through <laughs> this way before I had my depth gauge. So I'd kept it as you know. Yes, a trip down memory lane, and then also. I think this is a piece of walnut. Uh, so. Shed says, can you show the depth gauge? Yes, I will do in a second. Uh, so, this is another fail I had, and the the side went, but it's uh, it's got some. I've felt them before. Uh, hopefully, the camera will pick them up. Oh yeah, I can feel. Yeah, there's some. Uh, it's not like fractures and splits. So, uh, but yeah, I completely take the blame for that. I don't know what I was doing, I've, but Steve says at least it's pretty looking. Yeah, and it reminded me of Pac Man. Wagga 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 wagga. Right, the depth gauge. Wayne Bigfoot Woodcraft says you mean that you're not supposed to put holes through the bottom. Eek. <laughs> Good answer. No, you're not. Unless you want a funnel. Yeah, so let me just fingers and yes. If you can imagine that this bowl uh, was mounted in the jaws of the chuck like that, this depth gauge here. And you also need to use this, this board as you're working, the, the rod goes inside the portion of the bowl that you've hollowed out 
and this rod's calibrated to the jaws of my chuck and this lathe. So as the jaw, sorry, as the rod is going into the bowl, there is a gap here on the bottom, on the bed. That gap translates to how much I have got left to go before I punch through. And as you can see, <laughs> yeah, so this was this was pre-depth gauge and it's probably the area that I struggled with the most with being blind, perceiving depth of bowls. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I'd kept it for posterity. So uh, I found it yesterday and thought, oh, I'll show that the guys on the Talking Turn and see. So yeah, uh, but, it, but honestly, I have done dozens and dozens of them in the early days. Uh, you could actually just take that centre out neatly and then maybe put some resin or something. Uh yes I could do. Yeah. Well I've still got it. Yeah, and then and then that. Uh I think that was this must have been a very early one because it hasn't even got the spiral in the bottom. Yeah. That one. Yeah. So that's uh mucho early os. So yeah, you've got them, but yeah, that uh, that the, the the depth gauge, uh, yeah, it's a godsend and really useful. Steve says, have you ever repaired a funnel? Uh, no, but yeah, that's just what Nicola was saying. Maybe we can, if I if I drill through that nice and uh, <whistles> accurately with maybe a force and a bit, yeah. we could. Yeah, yeah, I could affect a, uh, you know, maybe even turn a wooden plug for it. Yeah. You know, and, and and epoxy that in. No, no, I've got the skills now to fix that. Uh, but it was done uh, before I got my depth gauge, which is pretty awesome. JP Woodworks on as well. Hi, Jamie. We're just uh, showing people a couple of your stickers, I think. So, yeah, there's one yeah. yeah, we're just discussing the, uh, the missing stickers. But I hope everyone, because Leon mentioned he hadn't seen his. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I hope... I've stuck everything up and I a million million apologies if I have inadvertently lost anyone's sticker I'm so sorry you know I'm as gutted as you are and you've not seen it uh the, the big board if I try to get my bearing the big board it's over there on the other garage door uh yeah you can only just really see it through the um yeah but when I'm turning when we're shooting tomorrow Matthew and I I'll have the sticker board resting on here so people can see. Wayne Bigfoot Woodcraft says he repaired one with Millie Pulse. Yeah, it's a good idea. Um, Grand Marshall, where did you get the depth gauge? I'm looking for one for myself. Uh, the depth gauge was made for me by a, a very talented wood turner, Brendan, uh, in Ireland, uh, Bacon Soda. He's uh, also known as B Mac Wood Turning, as well. So, uh, but yeah, he made it for me. Yeah, be dead easy to make. Obviously, there's a couple of measurements that you have to uh, consider. You know, it has to be compliant. If you're really clever, you could make a universal one. But he asked for a certain few specific measurements, i.e., uh, the the gap here on the bed, the distance from the headstock face to the front face of the jaws, the height from the bed to the centre of the spindle. Uh, so, yeah, with a few, and it is really only a few measurements, you uh, can make one of these, uh, and then you just in, do the initial calibration and set up. I put a piece of tape across the face of the jaws, this uh, this first plinth here was tight up against the headstock. You slide the main body tight up against that so there's no gap. And then I moved the rod until it was just resting on the tape. So really it was just at the same uh, distance as the jaw face. And that's it. Then you just lock it off and then that's it. 
you can work down to uh, literally a millimetre's thickness on the base of your bowl if you've got the, the nerve uh, and the eyesight. So yeah, that's pretty cool. So uh, what else uh, did we buy today? Bought a couple of blanks from Axminster for the demo in Croydon, in Croydon this weekend. Uh, and my, my bandsaw isn't playing a uh, game. Uh, I spoke to Phil Lewis, the manager today. So we're going to unbolt it off the base, take it in. It needs uh, a bit of a service. Uh, it's, I mean, it's worked well. Uh, and it is, it's, I think it's four and a half years old now, something like that. But uh, I could do with just sending it in. I haven't got the time. So Phil said, bring it in and we'll have a look at it and tweak it. So I bought, this needed a blade, a new blade, the bone saw, because I uh, snapped the other one, trying to force a piece of wood through, uh, trying to cut out a bowl blank. And I just, I was pushing too hard and snap the blade. So I've been and bought a new blade today and it's working fine. So that's how I cut the corners off that. Uh, so like I've said before, bone saw, band saw, tomato, tomato. Uh, so yeah, Axminster band saw is gonna go in for a service and a bit of a tweak. Uh, that's up and running the bone saw. Uh, so yeah, that's cool. So any any questions, anybody? Blue light turner has popped on. Um, Good evening. He's a bit late. He's had a manic day. Got in from work, sat down and fell asleep. Oh, just like <laughs> Steve Twidell. Well, I, I do like an afternoon nap, at least one a week. And certainly, uh, once you start getting uh, to a certain age, you start to slow down. Everyone knows that, don't you? So... Yes, I do like, if I can, squeezing one nap a week. Uh, so, that's cool. I'm just going to, for those of you who have just joined, my new cabinets containing anything that could go kaboom. So I've got this one here. This one's still awaiting a sticker. Um, JP says, um, which of your lathes do you prefer over the other and why? Uh, right. I really, really still love this lathe. Uh, it's It's been a good friend. And like I say, it has only ever needed a new drive belt. And that was shortly after I purchased it. Because obviously the uh, when they're bedding in, they can sort of like go through a belt pretty quick. Out of the four and a half years since I bought it, it's had one drive belt. That's all. Uh, I love it. It still performs very well. I have it set up now uh, with this chuck. I put my pen blanks in there. Uh, obviously, I've got the, the Jacobs chuck so I can drill out my pen blanks quickly and efficiently. Uh, it's just a bit quicker than... Yes, doing it on the bench drill is fine. But you start like having to clamp down vices and things like that. And there's just more things to lock down and check. Whereas this one, blank in there, chuck key, drill. So great lathe. Then we have, so that's now been redesignated the craft series. But that, that was, it was the hobby when I bought it. So now this is my favourite lathe to answer your question. Uh, it's... Uh, obviously, it's a trade series, so it can be used pretty much all day, every day. It's never missed a beat. Touch wood. Uh, touch wood. Never missed a beat. Uh, it's got ample capacity for what I need at the moment. It's got the lovely magnetic remote control. Uh, so great for everybody, and especially if you're blind. Lovely, ch uh, chunky, tactile knobs as well. A few lathes out there uh, have now these computerised touchpad panels. Uh, no es bueno uh, for the blind. Because the start pad feels the same as the stop pad. So that's really tricky for me. And I have been known to just keep hitting the stop pad 
when I'm trying to start the bloody thing. It's infuriating when you can't see. So lovely ch chunky tactile controls. Uh, it's ample power. Well, more than ample power. You saw that huge pair burl it had on last week. And it just, you know, didn't need to be pre-spin to get it running. It, yeah, it just spun it up. Lovely. Really well controlled. Uh, and it's bench mounted as well. You can get the optional stand for it. And also you can get the bed extension to take it out to nearly three foot in length. Uh, which I consider in every few weeks ago, hmm, should I get the bed extension for it? And, you know, if I wanted to turn, you know, something longer. I, I still may do. Uh, but a great, great lathe. It goes in the car. It's been up and down the country. Uh, yeah, love it. Love it to bits. Uh, you know, highly recommended. And then you've got its baby, baby brother here. Uh, another trade series lathe. So this is my dedicated pen lathe. So if you get an order for quite a few pens and your batch turning, I can go from there to there. Well, it's not like from there to glue up to there. But, yeah, anyway, this is a great lathe. Uh, super smooth. Obviously, not just for pen turning. Uh, miniature work, finials, doll's house furniture. Great. Uh, Comes supplied with a collet. Uh, there, and the mandrel. And, it, and the mandrel saver. So, this is hollow. Uh, yeah, super quiet, super efficient. It was at Makers Central. I carried that down there uh, and did a couple of pens on the Makers International. Uh, shallow Wadahoo, when the stand collapsed. Yeah, do you remember that, guys? The Makers International, I was stood there and the stand collapsed and landed on my head. Well, it bounced off my head onto my shoulder and it also uh, bounced off another guy stood next to me. Uh, honestly, it's one to tell the grandkids. <laughs> yeah. Um, Murder Fang has joined us. Oh, yeah. Great name. Murder yeah. Fang. <laughs> I thought you'd like that one. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is a very good name. Yes. So, uh, I'm trying to think of really anything else to say. Have you got anything you want to say, Nicola? Can you think of anything that I might have missed regarding the RPT and uh, what I need to do? I'm trying to... Obviously, Nicola has seen the documents. Yeah. Uh, no, you've covered everything that we, we need to do. We, we promise we'll have to do a few bits before um, the next podcast. Um, but yeah, we've done everything that we need to do. So it should, it should be fun. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I'm I'm not nervous at all because... Why should I be? I'm going to, you know, give it my best and, you know, hopefully I, I, I pass the assessment and get the accreditation. Uh, you know, I'm not nervous. Uh, I, I really, really hope I can do it and I, I believe in myself and I've just got to perform really well on the day. So, uh, oh, this needs tidying up. Yeah. Um, Chad's on. Hi, Chad. Uh, actually, these are these. JP says, cost me a fortune to make that happen. Um, I'm not sure. I, I don't know what that is now. Um, Chad Sam, uh, Larry Contreras says you have your shop set up nice. Um, I'm going to sneeze. I think. Nicola's going to sneeze. So while she does, uh, these are the blocks. <coughs> Bless you. These are the blocks. The stand collapsing. Oh, yeah. yeah. What stand? It's um, Maker Central. That was. All oh, right. All oh, right. Yeah, these are the blocks of palisander that Dr. D sent me from Denmark. So he sent these blocks, and because he, he wasn't sure how wide I want them, so I can mill them down on the bandsaw. So he sent me four blocks of those. Uh, I've just. In fact, it was when I did a demo in Scunthorpe, uh, there was a guy there selling bits and bobs, so we bought some. Uh, let's have a feel. I think that feels like the U, uh, and that feels like the olive wood. Got some of them. A uh, piece of wood gifted to me off Baz, Timber Marvels. 
So uh, I, I'm, oh, that's going to come in handy for a bit of uh, laminating, you know, a bit of a glue up job. Uh, but yes, so these these hold pen parts uh, and bushes uh, and various little odds and sods. They've been relocated from over on that chest of drawers. Uh, they used to go against the wall, but I've got that metal cabinet, that fireproof cabinet there now. So that's pretty cool. Uh, while I was having a feel around, I also found my other... Let's have a feel. Yeah, there. I found my other Maker Central Pass from last year. So I've got both of them up there. Um. Yeah, so hopefully it goes on again next year. Uh, th this, i got a magnetic rack. That's the that's the first set of wood turning tools. I've Memento got. now notification. Woo! Uh, that's the first set of wood turning tools that I bought on Amazon. Uh, cheap and cheerful, but did the job in the early day. Did the job. Uh, and underneath there, I've got some tool rest storage, which is pretty cool. Uh, over here, I've got. In there is my cordless drill charger. This toolbox is what I carry uh, a lot of my embellishing waxes in. This is really sort of like my colouring tote when I'm out and about. A selection of screws in all this. Uh, a bit further along, there's a selection of Nicola's late dad's old hand tools and drill bits and screwdrivers. Uh, and also, you've got this... Remember when you did woodwork in high school when they still did it? You'd sort of, like, put that on your bench and then you could rest work against it and uh, use your tenon saw. So I have used that a couple of times. It comes in really handy. So, obviously, we've got... a selection of stuff. I mean, we're, we're pretty much getting... <laughs> Uh, to the point where I've got everything I could possibly ever need, he says. Kitchen sinking, that's the only no, I could do with a sink in here. Uh, but, uh, yeah, what else? Got uh, sort of like smaller bits of timber in the boxes underneath. Uh, well, that's another thing they check, isn't it? That the off cuts. Yeah, the storage of wood. Yeah, oh, yeah, they did. Yeah, they don't want to see wood just lying around on the floor mm. as trip hazards and fire hazards. Uh, I have always had it, you know, just off cuts in boxes. Uh, so I don't have them uh, lay all over the floor, which is pretty cool. Uh, I don't know if I've ever told you, but if I sort of like get it over there, you seen the other kitchen cupboard over on the wall there, Nicola? Yeah. In there is my welding stuff, welding gauntlets uh, and clamps and steel brush, uh, my angle grinder and stuff in there. So that's that's in, that's over on that cupboard. And again, like Nicola said, she's got a little arts and crafts section to the right. Mm. Uh, Murder Fang says, stupid question, but why were some tools caught? It's not a stupid question. There is no such thing as a stupid question. The cleverest people are the people that ask the most questions. So I think you're talking about these. So they are these. These are my uh, tools that were made by Wagger Potter, and he's made these protectors uh, because carbide. As sharp as it is, is very brittle. Uh, so he's made protectors. So when they're in transit and going on the road and in demos, they're protected. I'm protected, so I don't cut myself. Uh, so, but yeah, good way to put it. Why they corked? Uh, so yeah, they're protectors. But uh, I did actually put a cork on the end of this swan neck one here because. Uh, and then I've got a couple of just neoprene tubing uh, that Wagger sent me as replacements. So that's there. And then there's over here, we've got 
the crown. Alert. Low battery. Close. You've got... YouTube. Finish. Button. No, not finishing. We've got the crown. Nano. Particle technology. So I've got another rubber bung on the end of that. Um, Chug says welding. Now you're talking. Um, and Scott says no kettle. You did it. You used to have a kettle. I did have a kettle. In fact, if memory serves, it's up there. Can I just get past? I'll show people inside the welding. Yeah, I think Chad would like that. Blind man. Blind man coming through. So, yeah, my... Just to show you, my MIG welder is under there. I'm itching to get that out again. That should be the other sticker board over on there. Yours should be on there, Chad. Well, it is because I felt. In that yeah, the, that's the the. Uh, the... So, anywho, uh, yeah, belt and disc sander, was a, a bench grinder, and now in here we have uh, my my welding clobber. So I've got. Oh, that's the uh, the goggle and dust mask combo. Uh, Makita grinder. It's actually got the Arbitec turbo planer blade fitted onto that at the minute. Cheap, absolutely cheap as chips, worth £1.50 face shield that comes with all these MIG welders. Pair of leather gauntlets up there. And also underneath is some TIG gloves. But I prefer them because you get a better feel. Uh, some overstock of goggles. The just perched in the back here. You've got magnets for securing work and clamping it. A selection of clamps and a steel brush. Uh, that, that little plastic case at the back there that has spare tips in, uh, welding tips, selection of spanners, some air defenders. Uh, in here, there's a load of 36 grit uh, discs, sanding discs, that go on to the angle grinder. And that's the, uh, the backing pad. Uh, selection of normal discs there, cut off discs and grinding discs, uh, anti-splatter spray uh, and a spare welding mask. So that's, that's sort of like the, the welding kit uh, and up on the top there. Chad says, how do you weld by feel? Very badly. Five tips for better flux core welding. Probably won't help. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I will listen to it. Actually, Chad, I, d I have listened to some of your welding videos, mate, 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 mate. Of course I have. Uh, and they were very good. Uh, and I was listening to yours and Chuck 2009 welding tips and tricks. But, yeah, I did listen to some. When I was doing the 300 hours of welding research on YouTube wasn't as long as I did with wood turning. I listened to uh, yours, Chad, Chuck2009 and welding tips and tricks. And of course, some of Jimmy DeResta's when he was welding. But yeah, I will listen to those five tips and tricks. Yeah, it's really, it's a completely different game when you're welding, when you can't see. It's a lot, lot trickier than wood turning. Uh, and Because I, I feel that I have no point of reference whatsoever. Uh, not scary, it's really, really interesting and a huge challenge i can't begin to tell you how much of a challenge it is to weld blind uh but uh, at least i was able to make that uh stool uh, and complete that so yes i will i will chat i will check them out mate uh, um, jp said could you just use a wood turning face shield as you don't need the light diffused on a welding mask i could do oh no i couldn't 
uh, because I would still uh, get eye burn and things like that right, okay. and, and sunburn uh, because my eyes, to all intents and purposes, still have feeling uh yeah to get the to get the front of the eyes blistered and everything it'd be horrendously uncomfortable so um chad said i just collared with jody from welding tips and tricks all right yeah um, i'd like to blindfold jody and see how he does might make a good video mm. um are you just um, i'm not sure if you what? Since we're stuck, I think. All right. I think we're frozen. Can you still hear me, folks? <laughs> Woo yeah, we can still hear you. Okay. This radio. <laughs> so, yeah, mate, I don't know if it's... But anyway... If you can still hear me, that's that's better than nothing. Oh, I suppose some people are thinking flipping out. That's terrible. So, uh, yeah, ask ask some of these welding pros to try and do it uh, blindfold. But that includes the setup of the machine as well. Let's not make it too easy for them. Again, it took me days to work out how to put the spool on. And, and feed it through and, and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, put a blindfold on them, Chad, and d ask them to do the full setup of the of the welding machine. Um, where did you get your stainless steel tool rods for the lathe? Uh, the the Axminster Evolution ones. Uh, they were made for me uh, by Wagger that makes all my custom tools. So uh, yeah, they're they're the one offs at the moment. Uh, so yeah, he made them all for me. Guy's been an absolute legend, as 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 have you all. Uh, but yeah, Wagger made them for me, all different lengths. Uh, and yeah, he's made all my custom tools. So. We're still frozen. Yeah, it's not doing anything, but people seem to be able to hear you. Okay. Um, anything else you want to add? No, I think... Uh, I think everyone's pretty much uh, has heard what I needed to say in this talking, turning and tea. Uh, yeah, Matthew's coming tomorrow. He's expected at about half nine, quarter to ten. Uh, so we'll have a full day then of turning and recording yeah so that's pretty much everything you know where i'm up to regarding uh, rpt assessment and accreditation and they did say to us you know i will they've never had to do this before the rpt they've never they've never assessed a blind guy so it's like i said last night if i get it when i get it uh be positive chris be positive I'll be the country's first and only uh, accredited uh, Turner with letters after his name, which is pretty cool. And really, the message I'm trying to convey with that is, imagine what you guys are capable of. And we keep saying this. So if some blind Mancunian uh, can get his RPT accreditation, uh, there's really no stopping the people that uh, are cited. So there you have it. That's my thoughts on it all. So we're going to sign off now. Uh, He's just super chatted you four ninety nine. Oh, why not a fiver? <laughs> oh, it's probably the, the way he does it. Why not a fiver? <laughs> oh, mate, I thought you loved me. <laughs> oh, oh, well, just you wait till you're on our podcast next week. <laughs> uh, so, oh yeah. So anyway, Jamie, JP. Uh, is uh, on the podcast next week. Is that is our lovely, lovely special guest? Yeah. So tune in for that uh, if you can. Uh, so yeah, I'm 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 certain I've I've mentioned everything that was uh, on my mental checklist now. So 
that's it. It's been a great talking turning and tea. I've really enjoyed that. And I hope you guys have enjoyed it too. Yeah. Uh, wherever you are in the world and whatever time of the day it is, uh, continue to have an absolutely awesome day or evening or morning. Uh, and so glad that you were able to come and hang out again. Um, Chad says, what? What? You have a podcast? Yes, we have a podcast. <laughs> Uh, so it goes out, Chad, on a Monday, a Monday, seven thirty p.m. UK time. So you're probably five or six hours behind us, Chad. Thinking roughly where you you are in the states. So uh, actually, Chad, while you're on, do you fancy being a guest? <laughs> uh, and if 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 you're up for it, mate, we'd love to have you on the podcast uh, on our Maker Monday segment. So that happens every Monday. We start off with our special guest, and then uh, uh, we have to, we ask you some uh, lovely questions, and then invite you to hang around and chip in whenever you want. Right? Yeah. Okay. So Nicola will. Uh, enter into dialogue with that and find out what what date and time suitable for for you and for us but yeah so there you go we've just booked chad from mancrafting a uh, lovely guy you've all met him at makers central uh, uh makes the wonderful powder coated mugs uh and yeah very very clever guy good all-round maker Your mug is traveled around the country. yeah yeah not just a maker central every demo that i go on uh, that mug goes with us in the car and I, uh, it just yeah stays hot all day, all day. Lovely. So, yeah, there you go. Chad Mangfting, future guest. There you go. Thank we've you we've, we've booked him. So uh, there you have it. Right, we're going to go now. So love you all, guys. Until the next time, keep on turning, everybody. Keep on making. Keep kicking life in the arse. And uh, don't forget to like, share, comment. And subscribe. So uh, I don't know how to sign off now because his phone's stuck, but uh might have to just get Nicola to do it. So thanks, Jamie, for the super chat. What? Chad says he thinks it might be the first time he's been called lovely. Yes, you are lovely. Right, you've got a little squ um, square with an X. Finish right button. Corner.